Um, <laughs> look at that. Oh. Hello. That's exciting. Hello. Right in the right in the middle. So <laughs> we will. This breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Kim, is it? How do we pronounce your name, Kim? It's Addis. Addis. Kim yeah. Addis. Cool. Kim. Well, well, welcome. Did to... I interrupt? No, it's all good. You you broke into the middle of Motivational Monday, but what a great thing. I was Love motivated it. to do that. You, you were motivated. motivated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to well, break welcome. on through. Break on through to the other side. I knew you were going there, Mr. Craig. He's got That's enough. I knock Buckle up. It's the Insurance Dudes Podcast. Perfect. Kim, you look worried. You look worried. I don't look worried. I'm just trying to understand what is happening with your face. Because <laughs> it looks like you're talking into something, but I can't figure out if it's part of the picture behind you or microphone. if it's a mic. It's the mic. Uh, but it got it. It's a virtual it's... background. It gets strange. <laughs> yes. You yeah. literally take acid every th- Any guest that comes on here takes acid as they enter the show, they don't even know it. That's it's very interesting. Happens. It's an interesting uh, in- observation, Mr. Jason. Yes. <laughs> and you're frozen. What a technological win we have going. Well, Kim, <laughs> welcome to the Insurance Dudes. Why don't you uh, give give a quick background how you got into to the uh, the business and 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 why you're here like what uh, why, are we, why are we talking to you yeah who the heck are you okay <laughs> well my name is kim Addis. i live in toronto and i own a coaching company called frame of mind coaching and i've been doing this for 16 years and i have a team of coaches all over north america and we train leaders how to coach and we mm. specifically work with the highly driven population people who really want to achieve huge goals people who are good by their very nature and they want to make a positive difference in the world. People will want to have all of it in their lives, you know, great Mm. health, travel, wealth, great relationships, the whole nine yards and people who are frustrated, who think about their lives and they say, okay, this is good, but it's not good enough. Mm. Like, why have I not reached the goals that I've set out to reach? I feel like I'm not as far as ahead as I want to be. People around me are succeeding. What's up here? Yes, sure. I've accomplished some things, but man, I'm not reaching my potential. Those are my clients. What do you think usually creates the limitations? A hundred percent in every single case. The reason any person is limited is uh, is due to a set of beliefs and Mm. thinking patterns that they're not even aware they have. So that can come deep, right? That can be from being a, that could go all the way back to childhood. There could it can be go some back to childhood. It can go back to early relationships. It could go back to your school days. You know, I was just talking to someone the other day who said, you know what? I failed grade one and then I got expelled in grade 10. And my sister was always the star at, at, at home. She was always getting mm-hmm. good marks. She was on student government. And then I started a business and then I, you know, kind of, raced ahead and I did better than her. And there's always this friction and competition between us. And, you know, he's this fighter, but his history has forced him to be that way. And so Hmm. in some ways it's been really good for him because that's forced him to jump ahead. But in some ways it causes a lot of tension in many of his relationships. Ooh. Ooh. So how would you, would anybody know if these things are affecting them, if they don't know that they're affecting them, like how, how, how do you become self-aware of that? Well, let's, let's start like this. If you feel agitated in any way, if you feel frustrated, Always. if people trigger you, if you <laughs> feel impatient, totally. if you're pissed off, if you're yes. like, why the hell are people that way? If you feel that stuff inside of you, if you feel mad at yourself, if you feel disappointed, ashamed, any negative feeling, that's an indicator that your thinking has a role to play in all of this. And it's worth exploring. Ooh. Do you okay, so- know, Mr. Craig? <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of Mr. Craig's. Uh oh, <laughs> love it. I love it. I mean, I guess we all have that um, 
to some extent, right? Not just Mr. Craig. <laughs> I'm so angry right now. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> no, that's so true. It's, it's fu- it is funny, though, because, um, I mean, all those things, to some degree, we all have, right? Would you say? Yes. Oh, every no. single one of us has a set of beliefs that we're simply not conscious of that play a role in how we interact with the, ro- with the world. So mm-hmm. it plays a role in how we communicate. It plays a role in the actions we take and we don't take. It plays a role in where we feel bold and where we feel not as confident. Mm-hmm. So that actually runs our lives. Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the narrative playing along in our... It, so there's two narratives, right? There's one narrative that is more conscious, we're aware of it, and then there's a narrative that we're not conscious of. Okay. And so I want to explore both of them. Mm. So what do you do? How do you do that? Give away your secrets. So yeah. when we work with clients, we always start yeah. off with a 10-week process. Ooh. Why? Because leaders don't have patience for long extended experiences. They want to move fast, and so we want to deliver results quickly. In those 10 weeks, it's intense. People have to work. Like, this is not for the faint of heart. So what happens is we ask our clients to listen to the recording. Why? So that they can start hearing themselves speak. They can hear the words they use, the stories they tell, where they feel frustrated and emotionally charged, where they get, like, agitated. And they start to learn about themselves and what triggers what. The second thing we do is we ask our clients to journal in an online journal with their coach. So at the beginning of the week, we give them, let's call it a journaling question or a prompt. And they start journaling. And every journal they write goes to their coach. And their coach reads and responds to the journal with questions. They probe. They dig. They make comments. And so there's this dialogue that's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth every single day. And so we're catching our clients in every circumstance. We want to understand how they work, what they think, how they feel at home, at work, with their spouses, with their colleagues, with their friends, with their parents. In every situation, we want to catch how exactly they think and how their thinking is affecting their performance, their behaviors, their outcomes. And what we find is that when people aren't achieving the outcomes they want to achieve, That means that their thinking is pointed away from what they want. So there's a problem we have to solve right there. Mm. Focus. We have to turn them towards where they want to go. Very often, Mm. people are like, yeah, I want to go over there. But they're headed over here. Huh. Why, why, Why is that? It's honestly habit, training, indoctrination. It's how we grew up. It's what we were used to. It's the stories we tell ourselves over and over and over again. It's the things we are used to. It's what we expect to happen. It's Mm. past experiences. All that stuff gets deeply lodged in our system and plays a huge role in determining what we do next. Interesting. And that is incredible. so, so we both own insurance agencies and then some other, some other, we're partners in some other businesses. But w- what we find, especially with salespeople, right, is they're, they're usually a little out here. You got to be a little crazy to be in, in sales. And, and if not properly kind of consistently trained, these grooves, it's like these grooves get created, these pathways, right, where they keep going back to doing things a certain way. And I'll there tell could you why. Be, why? Yeah, tell me. Because what you're trying to do and what most people try to do is you take a salesperson and you say, here's what you need to do, right? Mm. Let me train you. It's easy. Like, just mm. do what I tell you to do. Like, I'll write it on a board, follow my instructions, yes. day one, day two, do day it. three, day four. Just go <laughs> get the job done, right? Yeah. Except here's yeah. what you don't understand is that doing follows thought. Mm. So what happens is when you tell someone to do something new, they do it for a few days, then they go back. They revert. Why? Because they're, you expect their doing to change, but if their thinking is the old way, if their thinking doesn't change, right, mm. then doing is temporary. And if you want consistent 
long-term change, you have to address the thinking that's getting in the way. You have to address the beliefs. Doing follows thought. You know, what you're trying to do is take a dog and say you see a dog and you're like, hey, I really want that dog to wag its tail. So what you do is you go up to the dog, you grab its tail and you shake. Like, that's not how you get a dog to wag his mm. tail, right? But that's exactly what you're doing. But you need to understand a, ta- a dog wags his tail when he feels excitement, when he feels an emotional response, right? Mm. Right. And you're saying, like, forget all that. Let's just get the dog to wag his tail. Just do what I tell you to do. And mm-hmm. what I what I do when I coach is I'm like, I'm not worried about the doing. The doing tells me what you're thinking. But I don't need to tell you what to do. All I need to do is look at your thinking and seeing how your thinking is affecting your performance. And then I have to mm-hmm. challenge your thinking. I have to push, push against it a little bit and show you how your thinking isn't leading you to where you want to go. And so maybe we need a little adjustment here. And we need to line up your thinking with your goals. And when I do that, they naturally take the action. In fact, what they do then is they seek out your training and they follow it like the law. Hmm. It's so interesting working and you're working with leaders and and high performance people who want to take it to the next level. Um, But, but a lot of times what comes along with that is the ego, right? There's a big ego. And sometimes so, all the time. <laughs> all the time. So, <laughs> all the time. so how do you take that big ego, shrink it down and, and help them get past it? I would suspect that there's a lot of friction in this process. No, there isn't. There's no, there friction. isn't. Let me tell you why. Yeah. So the process eliminates friction and okay. I'll explain why. From my perspective, the relationship that I build with my clients is the single most important component of coaching. If you don't trust me, if you don't know that I'm 100,000% on your team and on your side and wanting everything you want, then you're not going to travel with me. You're going to say, forget it. I'm not going. Travel time Mm. is over. I'm done. So from the very beginning, the process is set up based on the daily communication and the way the coaches are trained to help you understand, like, I don't actually care what you do. You're not Mm -hmm. here to answer to me. You're not accountable to me. That's not how this is set up. I'm here to help you understand how you're getting in your own way. I'm helping and I'm here to help you remove whatever it is that's blocking your progress. And I Mm -hmm. do it with absolute conviction, love and compassion. And you see that you can hear it. It's oozing out of me. Right. Yeah. No, totally. Uh, you know, it, it's making me think a lot of, um, you know, can a leader. So we have a lot of uh, insurance agents that follow us that have agencies and we're all leading our teams. Right. It, essentially, we're all selling our teams on selling. Right. How can a leader sell them their team on selling if they don't feel it. Like well, how would you, what, what, what advice would you give? So again, leader? you know, it's very interesting because we coach leaders and we also train leaders to coach their team. So awesome. step one is helping leaders understand how their thinking is interfering with their performance and how their thinking is interfering with their team's performance. Mm. Okay. So yeah. From my perspective, and we coach leaders of massive companies, and my perspective is that the way a leader thinks has the single most important impact on team performance. So when we show him or her how their thinking impacts and has a trickle-down effect, and we show them how their thinking and their behavior and their approach sometimes doesn't line up with the things that they really truly want, They're like, whoa, I never knew that. I never saw that. Mm. Once we get them sort of aligned, then we say, let's teach you not only how your behavior is affecting others, but let's teach you how your team is thinking and let's teach you how to coach them so that their thinking is aligned with their goals and the goals of the organization. Yeah. Right? That's crazy. Yep. Yeah, it's so important to find the find those those co- points of commonality. 
right? Well, it's not only points of sometimes it's not common, right? And that's oh. okay. But yeah. once the leader understands the mechanics, understands how important the role of thought and belief plays in performance and they take responsibility for own th their own thoughts and, and behaviors, then they're in a position to learn how to coach others. And the moment they learn how to coach others is the moment their leadership skills dramatically increase. So let me tell you something really interesting. I train all over the world and I usually work with uh, entrepreneurs who own sizable businesses. And so every time I train, before I train, I send out, let's call it a survey. So I've been collecting data for years and years and years. I have hundreds and hundreds of data points and I ask a bunch of questions, but there are two questions that are super important. I ask, how equipped do you feel as a coach? In other words, evaluate your own coaching skills on a scale of one to 10. How good are you as a coach? The mm. next question I ask is, how satisfied are you with the performance of your team? Mm. And it's, it's like, you ever see a chart where it's just like a straight line that goes up? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it is. The more a leader feels equipped as a coach, the more satisfied they are with the performance of their team. It's like a direct relationship, one-to-one. -one. Right. That's interesting. That is interesting because, uh, but how many times do you see them so unaligned because they are very aligned with each other when you think about it, but how many times does somebody fill it out and they, you know, they feel like, oh, I, I don't feel very equipped and, and they're saying that, but I'm totally satisfied with my team. Do you ever see that? No. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the more equipped you are as a leader to coach your team the better your team performs period straight line and so if you kind of look at your team and you're like why aren't they performing well go grab a mirror because the answer is right there mm. i love it i love it so many times we are not very self-aware and we uh, we hear it a lot of times from agents about you know Oh, my team's this, right? Instead of taking that as I need to just train them better. But again, usually we jump to training. And what is training about? Teaching people what to do. And what I want to tell all trainers in the world, before you teach anybody what to do, you need to look at what they think and make sure mm. that their thinking is aligned with the goal. Let me give you an example. Like I have a million examples. Okay. Love it. Mm. So I was coaching an entrepreneur. Actually, let me back up. Yeah. I was coaching this individual and he said, listen, I really, really want you to coach a friend of mine, but here's the thing. I want to make sure that you treat him with kid gloves. Now, let me ask you a question. You've been speaking to me for like 20 minutes. Do I look like I have kid gloves on? No. Not so much, right? right? So I'm like, wow, that's weird. Why would you ask me to coach like that? Like, what's up with that? He said, well, he's a very good friend of mine and he has stage four cancer. I'm like, okay. Uh. So I get on the phone with him and I say, okay, I have two questions for you. Number one, how long do you have left to live? It's a hard question to ask people. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I, I'm not really sure. I'm guessing about two years. I've been on all these experimental drugs and, you know, like I've live longer than I expected so far, but I really have no idea. I said, okay, what is it that you want to accomplish as a result of coaching? He said, I really want you to help me increase my productivity. And I was like, that's very strange. If I had two years left to live, I don't think I'd be worried about my productivity. Would you? Not so much. Oh. So I mm. said, so why is that important to you? He said, well, I really, really, really want to grow my company and I want to sell my company so I can leave behind some money for my family, make sure my, my mother's in a good place. And I, it's really important to me. It's my priority to leave a legacy. I said, okay, let me ask you a different question. What is it that you really, really want? And he said, well, what I actually want is more time. And what I want is to take my mother on this great vacation. And I want to be in a relationship, maybe even get married and I want to buy a house, and I want to sell my company, and I want to run a triathlon. I said, well, why don't we do that? Mm. 
And so I started working with him and he owned a financial services company and he created um, lots of projects for people where he did valuations and, and different things. And every project that went out the door, he had to make sure he had his final say. He had to like sign off on every single project. So what did he do? He created a, a business where he was the bottleneck in his company. <laughs> right. Right. So I said, hey, you know, we should probably talk about re reducing your workload and we should also talk about hiring people. He said, I can't afford to hire people. My opinion was, hey, dude, you can't afford not to hire people. Like yeah, your right. life is at stake here. This is not a laughing matter. And so what we started to do was push back on the, his belief that he didn't have the resources, he didn't have the money to hire the right players. Over time, we hired the right people. We gave him a little bit more time, a little bit more space in his calendar. In my mind, I thought, I just got to reduce this guy's workload. I got to reduce his stress so he has a better fighting chance. Mm. Right? We put the right people in place. So let me tell you the outcome. It's been over five years. He ran a triathlon and climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. He took wow. his mom on two vacations. He's in this amazing relationship, and I think he's planning on marrying her. He bought a house. He renovated it, and he sold a good chunk of his company. Mm. He did that. I didn't do that. All I did was push back a little bit on his thinking to help him understand that he couldn't keep doing what he was doing if he really wanted to achieve his goals, that his thinking was getting in the way. Yeah. He took the action. I didn't take the action. Right. I just helped him think a little bit differently. You put the, you shine wow. the flashlight on it. That's exactly right. He had stage four five years ago and he's still rocking. He's still, he, he's amazing. He is amazing. He lives more than anybody I know. Like he, he's living his life at a super high level. And, mm -hmm. and most people don't live like that. Most people live like, you know, half dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, because we create all those things. Oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. <laughs> like, yeah, all those things, that, all those uh, stories that we tell ourselves, right? Think, think about COVID. How many I can'ts do we have? Right. Running I can't because now. of this. It's the ultimate excuse now, right? It's oh, I can't excuse. get that. I'm like, whatever. I love it. <laughs> it keeps. It's giving us tons of business. You know, it, it, it is it is it an opportunity or is it is it an obstacle? Right? Exactly. And so, so any in any crisis or or situation, it, it's either an opportunity or a, um, or a or a challenge, right? So all you got to do is look at it. Okay, where's the opportunity? Right? Are you the opportunist or are you the pessimist? Um, and I love how you you shined it on on that. It is so easy, and and we we've talked with many 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 an agent who gets stuck on the having to control everything, and um, and then what that does to you. Right? If I have to control everything in the business, then then I am the bottleneck. Right? Hundred percent. And the thing will you can never scale it. You can never scale it to what you want it to be if everything requires your stamp of approval on it. You just got to let go, right? You got to let go and you have to surround yourself with people you trust. And yeah. though there might be a few mistakes along the way, but you have it in you to recover and right. move along. Hey, we're not building airplanes and we're not, we're not, you know, doing heart surgery over here. So as long as we're not doing that, we can let go a little bit. And, exactly. And the worst, what's what's exactly. the worst that happens? You lose Correct. a client. If somebody gets mad, somebody screws up, but but everything's fixable. Exactly. Right? Awesome. What what do you see? Um, what what other things do you see over and over again that that are the aha, you know, or during your career that you've seen that were like, oh, okay, I know kind of now these patterns. Yeah, I mean, for me, I see a lot of leaders who have friction with people. They get frustrated with others because other people don't behave how they want them to behave. You know, uh, again, I'll tell you another story. I, I was coaching this guy. He owned a large accounting firm, did really, really well for himself. But when I started coaching him, uh, basically, I said, what's your greatest priority? And he said, hands down, it's my relationship with my wife. You know, it's more important than my business. It's more important than my friendships. It's more important than even my kids. It's super important that we're intimate, that we're connected, that we're on the same page, that we spend time together. It's really important. I'm like, OK, great. I got it. 
like three weeks into coaching, he writes in his journal, I just got into a massive fight with my wife. I'm like, okay, what happened? It's like, well, here's the thing. I have a son and my son isn't like, you know, that academic and he skips school and, you know, every morning he wakes up with a stomach ache. And anyway, one night he came over, it was Sunday night and he said he wanted to go to an all night party. And I'm like, absolutely not. You're already missing enough school. But my wife said, yes, I was furious. I blew up. I just couldn't believe it. Like, this is the worst thing for this kid. He's already missing school. He's already behind. He's already not showing up. Like, what are we doing here? And so he said, I was so mad that I went to sleep in the other room. So Mm. think about his number one priority. Does sleeping Mm -hmm. in the other room achieve his number one priority? No. Not at all. Makes it much worse. (laughs) Right? I mean, this is marriage 101. Come on. (laughs) But, you know, we can listen and we can say, yeah, Yeah, the guy had a point. He was right. Right? Right? He cared about his son. He didn't want to set a bad example. And on and on and on. Except that very often, leaders in particular need to be right. And when they need Mm -hmm. to be right, they walk away. They turn their backs on their number one priority. And we see it at home. We see it in businesses over and over and over again. Being right is insufficient for being effective. It's often misleading and misguided. Yeah. 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 I mean, it, uh, be having the, the need to having be, be right is it can, can just cripple you. And if, again, it goes back to letting go, right? You know, it doesn't matter as long as the, as long as the goal gets achieved, that's the win. Who cares if you're right or not? You're not going to be right. Usually, right? <laughs> well, if, if your number one priority is spending time, quality time, and being intimate with your wife, that certain, certainly is not achieved in another room. No. So figure it out. Right. Is, is that actually your priority? Right? Right. right. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, what, so if you were going to give one, one tidbit of advice to uh, entrepreneurs, to, to agency owners, what is that that they need to be the happiest and most successful. So can I give two? You can. Yes, 100%. Okay. <laughs> so the first thing that I want to give is just a, a tip that will help you become more aware of what's really going on. And what you want to do is this, is you want to notice when your emotions, when you feel agitated, mm-hmm. right? Angry, pissed off, frustrated, disappointed, any of those yeah, negative yeah. feelings, right? And when you feel those negative feelings, understand that those negative feelings are generated by your thinking. And so what you want to do is you want to explore that. And my biggest recommendation is to do it through journaling and say, what exactly do I believe to be true about this situation? Hmm. So that's Hmm. thing number one. Thing number two, if you're okay with it, I will offer your audience, your participants, your listeners a challenge. Is that cool? Yeah, love it. So grab a piece of paper and a pen. You're going to write down two journaling questions. Here they are. Question number one, what do you really, really want more than anything? And there's two reallys there on purpose because I want you to think about what you truly want, not what somebody wants for you, not what is expected Mm. of you, not what your parents want, your spouse, your children, your colleagues. What do you truly deeply want? Question number two is, so what's stopping you from having it? List all the reasons and then send it to me. And if you're really bold, request a coaching call with me. And we'll go over those questions because in those questions live all the beliefs that are getting in your way. So I'll give you my email address. It's Kim at frameofmindcoaching.com. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. And we'll we're put that put, in the show notes. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes. Um, and yeah. That is awesome. Fantastic. That's true. I don't how know what my thing come, is. How many times do you come across somebody that doesn't know what they truly want? Uh, 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what are some techniques uh, that you could give people to to truly find that out for themselves? Uh, one is that they need some time to sit with that question. And number mm-hmm. two is I find that people um, often do deeply know what they want, but they're not willing to state it because they a, either don't think they could ever have it. They don't think they deserve it. 
Mm -hmm. uh, they don't think that um, they should share it because it's very a selfish point of view. They don't think other people will approve of it, so they keep it hidden. And they're so used to keeping it hidden that it's almost hidden from them. Yeah. Mm. Do you see over and, and they... over? Oh, sorry. You go. No, no, no. You go. I was just say, do you see over and over people's need for approval? Yes. Yeah. It's amazing. Hundred percent. Yeah. What in in what is the break? What is the benefit for those people? that are in that category that's really, that might find it difficult because they're embarrassed or they might have to change their situation or something like that. What is the aha moment that if they would just truly came out with it, truly said what they really want, what is the benefit of doing that rather than keeping it held? Well, I, I really think that kind of coming to terms and, and claiming what you want is the first, is kind of the first point in truly owning your life, in truly living the life that you dreamed of and truly giving up all the frustration, the disappointment, the anger, all that stuff, the struggle. Let's give up the struggle. Yeah, like, We don't it. need to have it. We don't need to wrap our arms around it. It's not serving us. Yeah. I love it. Truly let go. Just like Elsa said, let it go, right? <laughs> Do you have kids? Let it go. <laughs> I do, obviously. Yeah. Disney's playing up here 24 hours a day. <laughs> I have five. Oh, Woo! nice. You got one on me. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. busy so what are their ages? They're old now. Um, the youngest is 20. The oldest is 26. So you're you're in phase, uh, what is that, phase three of your life? And, I don't know, uh, but I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> any grandkids? God, no. Not oh. <laughs> <laughs> you need some breathing room first, huh? Yeah. Just, That's what I'm enjoy thinking. Enjoy some quiet. <laughs> yeah, especially since they all came home for a while for COVID. Um, yeah, that, that was fun. <laughs> Crowded house. <laughs> it, it's time for some Kim time, right? That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, Kim, cool. thank you so much. So awesome to have you oh, on wow. here. And uh, yeah, we will. It was will, a pleasure. Uh, yeah, it's great website. You both. Is there a website too? Absolutely. It's uh, frameofmindcoaching.com. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. We'll put that in the show notes and uh, we uh, look forward to catching up with you down the road. Amazing. Thank you so much. I really Thanks appreciate so the opportunity. Care. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, you've got to check out the Insurance Dudes Inner Circle coming soon where you get extended interviews as well as live coffee talks in our private Facebook group. Join the mailing list today at theinsurancedudespodcast.com. Hey, thanks for checking out the insurance dudes. Hey, please subscribe. We got some really great stuff coming out.